please sit down. <laughs> please sit down too. <laughs> Your Holiness, it is a great honor and a great pleasure to welcome you today to the University of Bern. Thank you very much for taking your time. We know you are a very busy person. Thank you for taking the time. We feel honored by your presence. You have agreed, kindly agreed, that you will speak to us on the issue of um, sustainable development, the state of the, the globe, science that plays into it. And you have also kindly agreed that after your talk to us, you will take some questions from students. From not so sure? <laughs> okay, very well. We have 16,000 students um, here at the University of Bern. Most of them would have liked to be here. Unfortunately, we don't have a big enough place to host them, so we selected 500 students who were fortunate enough to be here to this morning. And there's also cameras so others can follow your presence here through the, through the internet as it is today. The University of Bern covers a wide range of topics. I would like to start with religious studies, which include Tibet, Tibetan religions. You just met our professors that work in this area. The University of Bern is the only university in Switzerland that offers these studies, particularly in Tibetan religions. We also have Central Asian studies, which focus on Tibet and Mongolia. And we have the classical disciplines of universities. We have theology, humanities, psychology, social sciences, economy, law, the natural sciences from biology all the way to space sciences and medicine as well as veterinary medicine. So we're a big university covering a lot of topics. One focus that this university is interested in or wants to engage in are issues that have to do with the state of our globe. Um, sustainable development, the well-known issues about our environment, population developments, all these issues are part of what we do at this university. We have centers of excellence. I want to mention two that go into the one this direction. One is the <coughs> Center for Climate Research, a center that has, or a research that has been going on for at least 30 years here in Bern. And our center now, the so-called Oeschger Center, is world-renowned for its research into the causes, the development of <coughs> global changes, and, of course, also the consequences of global changes. As well, we have a second center that's called Center for Environment and Development. It deals with the disparities between the North and the South Hemisphere on the of the world. It tries to address issues of water, water sanitation, um, agricultural policies, management of land resources and um, other issues that are particularly ac ac acute and important in the Southern Hemisphere of this world. These research centers are highly interdisciplinary. They, they combine natural sciences, economic so sciences. Southern Hemisphere, Europe? No, no, oh, southern, world. below that, 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 that. Yeah, okay. Oh. Natural, e very interdisciplinary research. And of course, on the background of this, we are very excited to be able to talk to you about your view on the issues relating our globe. We welcome you as a world leader, recognized and honored for your peaceful leadership, your wisdom and spiritual authority. As such, you play an eminent role as outspoken spiritual and political leader. You also manifest a keen interest in science and its impact on human condition. Understanding of science 
this seems to be one of your um, positions. Understanding of science is going to be crucial for the future. But, and we need to train every new generation in science. But at the same time, we need to train them also in leadership and responsibility. And for this, there's the best way to train them in this is to have credible, visible leaders. And you, Your Holiness, you are an outstanding role model for leadership and responsibility. We thank you very much for being here, for sharing your thoughts with us, for sharing your vision with us. And I would li now like you to invite you to speak to us all, and then, as I said, after your speech, we will ask you questions, or the students, not the, uh, will okay. ask you questions. Thank you very much. Paul from Dutch. I see one chair. Oh, one chair, I think, yeah. Chair to get. Then I think you, you, should, you should come here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not <well>, good. <coughs> Thank you very much. This is for me. Oh, yes. Other, <laughs> otherwise, I feel a little bit lonely okay, here. Okay, I'll be. Respected. Uh, elder brothers, and I think sisters, and then mainly young brothers and sisters. Indeed, I'm very, very happy having this opportunity, meeting with, uh, I think, people, and particularly younger generation. I often tell him, uh, my generation actually belongs to 20th century. That already gone. Uh, like myself, now nearly 78 uh, years old. So we so, uh, ready to say bye-bye. <laughs> uh, although I am telling people my physical condition, you see, uh, according to medical sort of expert, you see, they say, very good. So perhaps another uh, 10, 20 years maybe, uh, then, then I am telling. Uh, my knees some problem. But then, you see, my main sort of commitment or my main sort of special field is not sports. If my main thing is sports, then now these knees really create a lot of problem. <laughs> 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 but my commitment is just to talk, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, you see, even on wheelchair, <laughs> I can talk. <laughs> so perhaps next, uh, uh, 10, 15, 20 years, I think I can, I can carry this kind of, sort of work. <laughs> uh, but anyway, now you, the generation who, whose age below 30, 20, you are truly a generation of this 21st century. Now, uh, Past is past, only for memory. And sometimes out of because the memory, uh, sometimes joyful, sometimes painful. But in any way, it's past. Now future, although no guarantee, uh, but you see, there is always possibility, still open whether 
this 21st, the remaining 21st century, can be or will be heavier one or full of problems. According to some historian, 20th century becomes a century of violence. In that century, according to historian, about over 200 million of people killed. I think each individual meet this sort of feeling. Uh, they also life, also feeling. So, like myself, do not harm, do not so. I say they. Uh, I mean, when some someone is harm, unhappy, like myself. But then, a concept of war, different sort of different different because of the feeling. Oh, through war. We destroy our enemy. Actually, war means fire. Human beings like fuel for that fire. When one war front, now things become more serious, and war more fuels that human being put there and carry more violence. So in order to keep that fire, use human life, human body, human life. Really terrible. But then individual case is killing someone. Uh, we call murder. And have to go jail. Sometimes even death sentence. But killing millions of people, thousands, thousands of people, we call hero. I think our sort of concept, something wrong. Uh, if we really love human life, really have sort of human affection. Then the taking, killing millions of people in order to gain something for yourself or for your group. It's really bad. And then, more important, through violence, if you really gain something very good, I think that doubt. I think the European continent, through centuries, violence is part of your history. Uh, we Asia also, of course. <laughs> we Tibetan also, so sometimes even within ourselves fighting, killing. <laughs> so finally, through your own sort of uh, experience, uh, uh, your sort of previous leaders you see, found now violence is only as to create mutual nakasore, suffering, no benefit. So the concept of European Union started. One of my uh, said, uh, not only friend, but also I consider uh, my tutor about quantum physics. One German von Wieseke, Professor von Wieseke, uh, <coughs> say when, uh, since we know very well, so I become uh, his student about quantum physics, but I usually describe hopeless student. Uh, I think uh, perhaps I wish 
among <laughs> this young student, also maybe some hopeless student. <laughs> then, then I feel I'm not alone. <laughs> that means, you see, we don't want to <laughs> that means when I listen to the Professor Von Wieseker's explanation about quantum physics, it seems I understand something. After lesson finished, nothing <laughs> left here. <laughs> so, so I just got hopeless student. <laughs> so, so point is, he once he told me, I think that I think uh, in the nineteen, I think nineties, I think. Oh, uh, he mentioned when he was young. Uh, every German eye, French is their enemy. Uh, similarly, in French eye, German are their enemy. But that kind of attitude completely changed. That was when he mentioned that, about 1990s, like that. So, I think, even I think, uh, uh, Franco-German unified forces also create. Before, I think such things are unthinkable. So these are, I feel, the uh, sort of experience through difficult, through violence, and people realize now uh, work for common interest is much better, much important. Uh, think everybody's sort of interest, not uh, one individual nation or something, something sovereign sort of state. That is the part of the <coughs> Community, part of the sort of uh, continent, right? Uh, Europe. Therefore, these are, I think, not necessarily out of moral principle, but out of necessity. Uh, so, therefore, uh, then I think, look, recent event uh, within this 21st century, at the, at the beginning of the 21st century. I often telling people, Mr. Bush, former president of America, one of the former president, oh, wonderful person, as a person, really wonderful. Since it's the first meeting in the White House, see, we immediately become a very close friend, <laughs> as a human level. So I, I always express, I really respect him, I really love him. Uh, then, after K Iraq crisis, another my sort of meeting, another occasion meeting, and I told him, I love you, I respect you, but some of your policy is concerned, I have some reservation. <laughs> 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 and he laughed like that. So now, look this, I'm quite sure his motivation is very good to bring democracy, openness in Iraq. Uh, so, aim is very good. Motivation is very good. Sense of concern of Iraq's or say the Iraqi's sort of well-being. Of course, democracy is much better than totalitarian closed society. So therefore, his motivation and goal is very good, but Method, wrong. Use force. So quite easy to eliminate Saddam Hussein as one person and his some sort of the trusted sort of group. But uh, once there's violence involved, I think the is through violence the main sort of the uh, effect is eliminate physical, but not, not, not hatred. Once you use violence, uh -huh. someone killed, but they are relatives, they are children, they are grandchildren. Then develop more anger, more hatred. So that's the ultimate source of violence. Any violence, you see, 
helping to increase these ultimate source of violence. So therefore, uh, no matter what motivation, what goal, what positive goal, but method is really makes differences. So therefore, uh, once I think very nature of violence is unpredictable. Uh, the person when start violence, use violence, use force. They their view limited use limited force. But the very nature of violence is unpredictable. The soon it become so unexpected sort of negative consequences. It it often now Iran crisis, Afghan crisis. So, including this because September 11th event, uh, now so called the terrorist sort of movement in different part of the world. So these are I think negative consequences about violence. So therefore, violence not only brought suffering at the moment, but also, you see, it was implant rare. Two. The implant is a negative feeling. So it may remain decades and decades. So, so this 21st century, now, should be century of peace. Now, how to develop peace? Through prayer? No. I think during this tremendous war, warfare is taking place, I think the, uh, every nation pray to God. <laughs> Please bring peace, peace. <laughs> but I think the effect of bless, blessing of prayer is limited. Quite logical. If violence created by God, then we ask God, please bring peace. Some relevant. But violence we created, uh, it is entirely up to us is it to avoid violence or to reduce violence. Should not sort of put responsibility on God's shoulder. Isn't it? Uh, so therefore, now the peace we must create. Peace does not mean uh, no longer any conflict or source of conflict or potential of conflict. No. Conflict remain. Then also, you see, peace does not mean in spite of some problems, we remain as a indifferent. No. We have to tackle these problems. Now the peace means the way to tackle this problem, not using force, uh, but through dialogue. In order to develop genuine dialogue, you must respect others' view, others' right. <coughs> so that's the sense of concern of others' well-being. Then the genuine spirit of dialogue can develop. A lot of negative feeling and with that kind of motivation. Very difficult to carry meaningful dialogue. So therefore, this century uh, should be a century of peace. Peace means uh, we must serve. Whenever we face some problem, we must think, we must sort of uh, react to uh, uh, dialogue. That's the only way. So I often tell him, 20th century becomes century of violence, century of war. Now this 21st century should be century of dialogue. So now mm, these young people think you see, these things. So you have the responsibility. You see, whether create happy world or miserable world, that's up to you. Please think very seriously about these things. 
No, I think the source of conflict, perhaps, right? source of it, source of conflict, or, or potential of conflict, I think will increase, as you mentioned now. The population increasing. Uh, just, I, I think, a few, few weeks ago, so I heard through BBC uh, some expert mention now, uh, within this century, end of this century, human population will reach 10 billion. Then also, the uh, gap rich and poor, not only global level, but also national level, the serious gap there. This not only morally wrong, but practically also source of problems. We have to think seriously how to reduce this gap, rich and poor. So that means not some of the communist sort of practice, all wealthy people eliminate <laughs> and everybody remain poor. Not that way. <laughs> the poorer section of people's their living standard, their sort of economy must improve. So then the question of the nature resources. I think uh, eventually, I think we will, I think, because uh, of the increase, this use solar, this is, uh, solar, solar energy, solar power. Uh, uh, this, I think, very good, very good. Uh, Some time back, and I, when I saw you sitting, map, the Sahara, that area. In any way, for the time being, you cannot cultivate. But the solar energy uh, always remains there. Uh, uh, so instead of, sort of spending money for a weapon, concentrate this technology which utilize solar energy uh, and then also, uh, perhaps I think the, the sort of impossible sort of the hope or impossible sort of dream. So use seawater and kasa jubuti. Kasa, make, uh, make sort of the pure, pure water. Purify. Uh, there is the, the technology there. I noticed in San Francisco uh, area, you see, one time, many years ago, one time, I, when I we uh, also drive uh, some few sort of factory there, I asked what this factory, they just also the seawater you know, translate into pure water. So technology there. So then they spend more money uh, instead of building warship or as it, the military sort of aircraft, these things, uh, or making gun. So you spend more money uh, and those scientific or technology, right, they are sort of expert, expertise, you see, use some kind of constructive work. Work for warfare is destructive and a waste of money. These, you see, these are really constructive. So, you see, there are a lot of sort of dry places eventually translate more green, because uh, uh, Greenland. I think theory, uh, uh, theoretically, I think possible. We have that, I think, resources and also, I think, technology. I think. Uh, otherwise, you see, when we came to Europe from airplane or sea green, and including India, and also all, all those many Indian Arabs or, or, or Northern Africa in this area, I said the water really very difficult. So the land dry, white. So we have some jealousy. These Europeans really enjoy <laughs> wonderful green land. <laughs> so now when we when we talk, the, this gap, uh, rich and poor, must reduce, and we must think so these things automatically come in our mind. Uh, 
and then sustainable sort of economy. I believe farm, well, farming economy, sorry, farm economy, agriculture economy, I think is more sustainable than big factories, isn't it? I feel. And also, you see, that immense sort of, because of the, I mean, important factor to remain more or less equal. Uh, through farming, agriculture, economy, may not become billionaire. Uh, but, uh, okay. <laughs> and then also, I think, I prefer, uh, I mean, here, Switzerland, you see, uh, I think every sort of university available area, you see, you use for uh, crop survey, uh, agriculture purpose. So I think very, very good, very good. So that also, I think, one way sustainable, one way that also, you see, can help to develop more equal because of the living standards, <coughs> right? And also, you see, become more closer to nature. When we work in big factory or big sort of big building, sometimes uh, we also become part of the mission. Uh, the workers in factory, I think each, each worker almost like is a part of that big mission. Mission goes, and that person also is have to go that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Uh, less sort of contact with nature. I think people in farmland more closer with nature. Uh, so the, my, my point is, you see, we must you see, tackle, reduce this gap. And economy, uh, population increasing, economy must be sustainable economy. So these are very serious matter. Then on top of that, global warming. That also quite serious. So nature disaster, I think will really increase. So this 21st century may not be a very smooth century. Or in any way, you can't take for granted right? oh, this century will be your, your progress or development, this because of that, will, will grow and take for granted. Uh, you should not do that. You should not feel that way. Problem bound to happen. Uh, now the problem, the most cases, global level problem, ecology, uh, different nations, uh, of the, uh, beyond the individual nations, because of the power or something, like uh, global economy, so beyond national boundary. So that compared to us, to, we have to think humanity rather than European, or Asian, African, Latin American. But we have to think humanity, global level. Because the problem, the humanity, the global level. So one, in, one, two individual nations cannot solve this problem. So we have to think the humanity as a whole, global level. So now here we need sense of global responsibility. And that, on the basis of uh, realization, oneness of humanity, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, we are same. Seven billion human beings, completely same, mentally, emotionally, physically. So every, everybody want happy life, do not know suffering. And everybody have right, equal right, to achieve happy life. Then we are social animal. One individual sort of future entirely depend on the rest of the humanity. Humanity, or firstly, individuals or future depend on the community. One community's future depends 
or the bigger community or national level or then, glo then global level. So basically, humanity, the future of humanity, bright, good, individual get maximum benefit. The global level, some disasters happen. Individual cannot escape from that. So, uh, so, that, so therefore, I always you see, telling or expressing, you see, this uh, now time come, we have to think about uh, sort of global level rather than uh, my nation, my continent, or like that. So the reality, now here, the reality much changed. But our perception often, you see, remain old way of thinking. So that creates gap, re rea <coughs> reality and our perception. So now reality change, our perception must catch up away according to that new reality. So now, whole group, whole, whole world is just one entity there. So, oh, so we must, you see, look from that, that level, then, then try. Now here, education, or now here, vision is very, very essential. In order to develop vision, more holistic vision, Education is the key factor. Actually, the very purpose of education is to reduce gap, appearances, and reality. I think people the, here, this area, they say one sort of uh, or say good weather and a good sort of or say uh, monsoon, or I don't know. Now, uh, you feel very good. While some other part of the world, a lot of difficulties. So looks, appears, no connection. But if you think global level connection, global sort of economy connection, think these things more seriously, then you realize your future also related with the rest of the world. So education, uh, gives you more realistic sort of Kazota uh, outlook. That brings realistic approach. Any unrealistic approach result disaster or fail. So we must carry individual future, individual level or community level, global level, we must uh, follow realistic method, realistic sort of way of approach. For that, education, knowledge, fuller knowledge, and education now here. One ex expertise, way, expertise, one particular field. It is important, uh, but that, uh, that alone, not sufficient. We must have more holistic, always look of so the holistic way, because things are interdependent, interdependent, interconnected. So that's the reality. So any problem not come independently due to many other factors. So when we tackle one problem, we have to keep in our mind the whole causes and conditions. So we must have holistic view. So these are education. Because of the, because of the create more holistic, uh, and education reduce the gap appearances and reality. So now, I'm very happy, great honor, uh, share some of my sort of uh, thought, my concern to you. Uh, now, I'm leaving tomorrow. So, this problem remains with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to think seriously. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, my responsibility, blah, blah. And now, I've, uh, I, my responsibility finished. finished. <laughs> I'm now going to Northern Ireland tomorrow. 
some blah blah there. <laughs> then, then Gaza Jude, uh, Cambridge in England. Uh, I think two days again, blah blah. Then return to India. <laughs> so, uh, so that's all. Now some questions. Questions. Thank you very much. We will have questions. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now how to manage? I, I think it's the easier way is, I think, in the center, uh, hold the microphone. Then you see those people who have some questions and come here. That's more easier and save time. Otherwise, the microphone, you see, ka. You know how it goes. <laughs> ka. Oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> All questioners remain here. Where? Uh, and how you, uh, you select? They are all right. We, we select it by the most difficult questions. <laughs> oh, that okay, yes. Okay, start, 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 start. You know, yes. My name is Steven and I'm studying psychology. You see? And, uh, Ecology, yeah. Psychology. 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 Yes. And uh, it's a pleasure to ask you a question. Um, currently, it's often discussed in our university if our university's canteen should serve less meat. Um, it is well known that uh, the production of meat is not ecological, huh. but nevertheless, many students really like uh, eating meat. So, uh, what would you favor huh. such a huh. reduction of meat dishes and what? Absolutely, you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Here, I myself, you see, create some contradiction. Firstly, uh, I think since uh, I think my age around, I think, 14, 15, all the Tibetan government sort of festivals usually serving meat, uh, that stop. I request uh, should serve vegetarian food. Uh, then, uh, after 15, 15, uh, after 59, when we came to India, uh, 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 1965, I also tried to become vegetarian. No, no meat no egg, no fish. Uh, over uh, 20 months, I remain. Then some problem. The gallbladder, because I didn't mean jaundice. Yeah. Appetite. Jaundice. Jaundice. Oh. You see, develop. Uh, then, you see, my body whole body become yellow. And my eyes, nails, all become yellow. No. Then, uh, allopathic medicine, because of the physician, as well as the Tibetan physician, then they uh, suggest to me better to return our original or say, diet, non-vegetarian. Uh, so later I told, uh, jokingly, at that time, I truly become living Buddha whole body yellow, <laughs> like Buddha, <laughs> but uh, not out of spiritual experience, but out, <laughs> but out of illness. <laughs> Meantime, all our settlement in India, right from the beginning, pickery, fishery, poultry, we did not accept from volunteer sort of helper. Uh, uh, many of them suggested the poultry very sort of very good for economy, uh, and also pickery like that. We right from the beginning, we 
so we response thank you no no thank you like that uh, one time uh, still is a, a few years in one of our <coughs> uh, bigger settlement some poultry there so they told me they not for killing not for meat but for egg they say then I ask when the hen at the age of so that no longer produce egg and what to do because I noticed 1960 I think 66 my first visit to Japan uh, one part of my program is I visit one farm land farmer the poultry I was told about 200 chicken no, hens then I asked after their egg is it finished then what what what, what they do selling for meat so because of that I asked those Tibetan after because we finished the egg and no 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 answer then I pleaded them if your settlement these poultry are really highly essential then I have nothing to say but not so because of the uh, essential then please stop that then since then no poultry and then uh, all the bigger monastic institution their common kitchen uh, use non-vegetarian food completely stop all only vegetarian food the common kitchen but the individual that's up to them so I was told this is some big monasteries uh, I mean area the uh, the monastery sort of kitchen serving only because I serve only a vegetarian so uh, number of monk <laughs> I said the customer, the custom, customer of some small restaurant uh, who is selling uh, non vegetarian food. <laughs> so, custom, custom, customer, number of, customers. Uh, number of customers, uh, mainly from the monk student, increasing. <laughs> so, it is a way, it is a way. You see, we really, you see, try uh, promotion of vegetarianism. It is very, very important. As you mentioned, besides our respect, their life, but also ecologically, the beef farm, bakery, these things, ecologically also very, very harmful. Then economically, also uh, quite sort of expensive. So, so in very and ecology. So various sort of aspect, they reduce poultry or beef farm and pickery, and then fish. Many people say no sense of life. The fish just consider vegetable. But when we see, uh, after sort of caught, where caught, uh, uh, catching some fish, I myself also, you see, when I was in, 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 in Lhasa, uh, I love play with fish. Uh, uh, some pond, some fish there. I feeding them, and meantime, catch <laughs> and and they do that way <laughs> so clearly you see the they also have the sort of feeling pains and pleasure and fear so that means they have the sort of experience of pain so they're getting like human being very painful like that so the promotion of vegetarianism it's very good. So through education, not compulsory, education is very good. Yes? 
Next question. Next question. <laughs> so, so here, myself, now uh, one contradictory things. Uh, so appealing other people be vegetarian. I myself am non-vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my own kitchen also, you see, I think uh, twice a week, not every day, that we, we practice that. Yes, now next question. Here is the lady. Your Holiness, my name is Melissa Solitulman and I study science of religion and theology. Well, I have got a notion that a lot of people are going to lose the motivation to change to a sustainable lifestyle because they feel too weak compared to the powerful system. How, co how could we keep the creed that everybody has a hand in a sustainable future? What? Those points which I mentioned before, mm. thinking global level uh, and thinking about humanity, as a one. Now, these, you see, uh, we have to cultivate through education from, from young age. Here now, the problem, very existing education, modern education, is very much oriented about economy development economy value, not talking about inner value or moral principle. That's why those materially highly developed and modern education highly developed, a lot of crisis. Look, I think Switzerland may be less, smaller population, but like America and now Japan also, and China also now, uh, and Russia, all these, you see, uh, some crisis in the society. Uh, some senseless sort of murdering or killing by children, school children. Uh, and I think overall, uh, many of my friends, you see, say, uh, uh, we, uh, mainly in the West, or not only in the West, I think in the modern world, facing some kind of moral crisis facing. So now, how to tackle that? If we rely on religious teaching, then last thousand years, religious teaching, there, yeah, but fail. Uh, I mean, fail to bring entire sort of a citizen, become a more sensible person, that, in, in that field, fail. But of course, individual, thousands, thousands, millions of people uh, get, you see, the immense sort of benefit, these different religious traditions. But on the humanity as a whole, I think this religion is a fail. Uh, and then, now, uh, who take care of this, this problem? Family, value, some extent, but not full. So now only education. So the existing uh, modern education only oriented about economy value. So now in the education system, we must, because of the ad, we must include education about moral principles, moral values, moral ethics. Now the problem, any moral ethics based on religious faith, uh, difficult to fit in secular education field. So now, uh, in India, almost over 3,000 years, uh, there's tradition, 
respect all religions and also respect non-believer. You see, that we call secular, secular so idea, so secular attitude. In the West, some of my friends, some Christians, some Muslims, uh, they have some sort of reservation about the word of secular. So they understand that secular means a little bit negative towards religion. I think, obviously, during French Revolution and the Bolshevik Revolution, you see, uh, some sort of tendency against religion. But actually, not truly against religion, but religious institution. Religion, even animal, I mean, real, real, sort of, real, real meaning of religion is compassion, forgiveness, tolerance. So even animal appreciate if you show genuine affection, compassion. Animal also appreciate. So uh, no human being, because will against where, against love, compassion. No. But then institution, religious institution, firstly, quite often corrupted. And particularly during French Revolution and Bolshevik Revolution, the elite group, the ruling class people, who extremely exploiting the working class people and poor people or, or people. So, so these ruling class people or that institution, political institution, actually received support from religious institution. Therefore, in order to destroy the existing political institution or exploiter, you have to develop courage to against religious institution. I think even today, sometimes even within Tibetan, sometimes it is necessary to against the century-old religious institution that depend on individuals who have that power, use that institution, and exploit it, cheating people. So therefore, uh, we must make distinction against or opposing religion, or I mean opposing religious institution which already corrupted. That does not consider, does, does not mean against religion in any way. Uh, now in India, Indian understanding about secular means respect, not at all negative towards religion, but rather respect all religion, and no preference this religion or that religion, and also respect non-believer. One school of thought. Uh, in India, in ancient time, uh, in ancient time, one school of thought, nihilism, denying any value of spirituality, or any value of the right, spirituality, so truly materialist, and also nihilist. So the rest of uh, ancient Indian tradition criticize, you see, that sort of concept. But meantime, person who hold that concept refer to a sage. That indicates respect. Uh, nihilism to criticize, but nihilist respect. Clear. So that's over thousand, over three, I think around three thousand years that religion there. So the. Modern India's constitution based on secularism. Not at all secular means sort of against or negative towards religion. So, uh, with sort of the full support or agreement with my sort of friend, some educationist, some scientist, some thinkers, so now we, you see, trying to 
promote uh, secular ethics through secular way of approach. Not talking religion, not talking God or Buddha. Simply our common experience, common sense, and scientific findings. More warm-heartedness here. Uh, it automatically creates more peaceful mind. That we call healthy mind. Healthy mind is most important factor for healthy body. So, uh, uh, so these uses these factors and educate people. The practice of love, compassion, affection, these things are not, not necessarily religious subject, but this is biological factor, something very important for, for, for people, for humanity, or for rather for all centered being. That I think we can teach. Uh, so that uh, we already, you see, trying, uh, already sort of working in that field uh, with full cooperation. S many scientists, mainly in America, and also these scientists, they individually, they already uh, carry sort of teaching about secular ethics. Uh, then also, now in India, with full cooperation, some universities in Delhi, and also now, uh, I recently I visited some uh, different universities. So they are very very eager, you see, to uh, to start the Kasatimind secular sort of ethics in their uh, education field. So we already trying to produce one sort of Kasa uh, I mean draft, which can fit in secular education field and include secular sort of the education curriculum. So we're already working that. Clear? Good to work, Clear? Did that, that's you. This is also. Thank you. Now, next question. Your Holiness. My name is Dominic, and I'm studying German studies. Kasa, German, 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 German language studies. Yes, that's all. <laughs> and also German mentality. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, you already talked about it now, but my question is, do we still need religion? And which tasks in the process of achieving a sustainable future can religion perform? Religion, uh, like I think uh, some ancient Indian religion, I think uh, oldest, re oldest religion, and also I think Egyptian, some ancient sort of the spirituality, perhaps 4,000 years old. Uh, uh, so see, now, now mainly see, those, those sort of religious tradition which have some theological, philosophical views. So these, uh, uh, these major religious tradition, I think, last over 2,000 years. Uh, it helped. <laughs> I think millions of people in the past and today and the future also. Uh, so, Religion, I feel, related with individual. Religious faith related with individual. Culture related with community. Now here, for example, the Swiss or European continent, mainly uh, your culture, Christian, Jude, uh, Judo, Christian sort of the heritage way very much related with Judeo-Christian faith. That does not mean everybody within that sort of tradition uh, believe uh, Christianity or Judaism or so on. So individual case, now for example, 
Tibetan case, at least the last four centuries, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan people, the Tibetan community, within the Buddhist culture, Buddhist cultural heritage, including those Tibetan Muslims. Uh, their religion, Islam, but their way of life very much in the spirit of Buddhist culture. And they really love this Tibetan language. For their religion is concerned, no relevant. And they got the Arabic language like that, Quran, Arabic language. Their prayers all in Arabic. In Arabic. Uh, recently, I visited a Muslim community, Tibetan Muslim community, in Sirinaga. After, after over 20 years, uh, once more I visited. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, and I met some of their children, say, seven years, 10 years, they speak Tibetan very well. No particular sort of school for study Tibetan, but their own family, mm -hmm. uh, they kept Tibetan language alive. I think some Tibetan, Buddhist Tibetan, in America, in Canada, in their family, speak more English rather than Tibetan. So their children forget now Tibetan. But Muslim family kept Tibetan, Tibetan language very alive. So their religion, Islam. Uh, but their way of life, very much in the spirit of Buddhist culture. And then the question, since religion related with individual, so there are people, now I think recently I saw one reporter, one report, the out of seven billion human, pop, human population, one billion human being, non-believer. Uh, and then also, and frankly speaking, among the believers also, you see, quite a number of mischievous people there. <laughs> Even religious sort of preachers, uh, including Buddhist, uh, and many other Hindus or Islam or Christians and Jews, I think everywhere, uh, teaching religion, but their life uh, often you see against religious teaching. So sometimes I describe religion teach us how to act hypocrisy, <laughs> saying very nice love God, God like that. Uh, but doing differently. So that clearly shows a lack of moral principle. All these different religious traditions, actually, the strengthening these basic human values or moral ethics, but due to lack of full conviction about these moral ethics, uh, mainly biological factor, due to lack of conviction, and then religion, although it's very, very much emphasis these values, but not pay seriously. That's just, just lip service. So therefore, now, firstly, in order to build believer Genuine, serious believer, we need uh, a secular uh, teaching of secular ethics. Then those over billion human beings who have no religious faith, these also important part of humanity. Uh, they themselves also, also is a want a happy life. So they completely ignore about this inner value. If we try to introduce inner value through religious faith, they will, they will not listen. So use common sense, use scientific findings, uh, common experience, then we can, we can give them some kind of deeper awareness about this value. Then they will follow, like that. So uh, the seven billion human beings, if you ask, Religion is necessary? I say not necessary. 
But then, if you ask, religion knows the value in modern society, uh, I will say, uh, still value there. This one. Like that. Now, next question. Your Holiness, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to ask you a question today. My name is Manuela Brilisauer and I study Tibetan studies. Um, my question concerns the Tibetan youth that grow up in India and in Nepal. And I would like to know what are the problems that they face in their everyday lives and what can we do so that they can have a successful future? Thank you. Hmm. In the early 60s, when we uh, said, uh, and actually, in uh, 1959, the uh, 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 Tibetan refugee community, uh, start. Then soon after, I think, 60, we set up modern school. Because now new circumstances. And in any case, Tibetan themselves also need modern education. During Tejan Dalai Lama, you see, he sent some young student to England for study. But unfortunately, that program uh, not carried continuously. That's very sad. And then, so he, he many, he tried to, in a different way. Uh, after you see, uh, he find difficulties to send student to England then he sent to Eng uh, India. Then also he start uh, English so I'm school for mo modern school in Tibet itself. Then during my time also, you see one uh, modern uh, school start in Lhasa. Within, I think, six, seven months, it closed. So, uh, so we very much sort of regret. And Buddhist education, Buddhist philosophy, I think Tibetan language is the, now today, I think uh, nearly, I think, a billion, billion Buddhist population on this earth. I think best language and complete Buddhism is only available in Tibetan tradition. That's very clear. So as far as because of the Buddhist knowledge is I think in India itself, Nalanda institution is the top most sort of the developed uh, Buddhist institution. So the person who introduced Buddhism in Tibet was one of the top scholars of Nalanda institution. That's Shandarakshita. In Tibetan, we call Kenji Shiwoto, one of the top sort of master of Nalanda. So our emperor, Chisun Tezen, invited him. So since he himself, one of the top master of Nalanda institution, so the Buddhism which he introduced in Tibet is pure lineage of Nalanda tradition. Now particularly one significant was is the Buddhist logic. Uh, although you see translation from uh, Sanskrit or Pali in Chinese language, I think at least uh, three, four centuries earlier, Buddhism reached Tibet, seventh century, China, I think third century or fourth century like that. But the translation, uh, this, uh, the Sanskrit word Parman, or Tibetan called Tsema, Tsema, the logic. In Chinese translation, except one sort of book, not other sort of important major text not translated in ancient time. Uh, in Tibet, in Tibetan language, 
because of Shantarakshita, you see, all major texts of logic translated into Tibetan. So last over a thousand years, we carry study. Myself also used to study these things. All uh, those, those Tibetan monastic institutions, sort of student, they all, uh, most of them, you see, uh, some rubbish monk also there. <laughs> and the very lazy sort of monk also is there. But those real scholars who spent uh, 30, 40 years for study, uh, including Buddhist logic. So now today, when we met, Sri Lanka people, Sri Lanka Buddhist, we have common practice. Vinaya, monastic system, we have common practice. Then we, when we met the Chinese, uh, the Pranjaparamita Sutra, common. Uh, and also, you see, there's some tantric practice also common. Uh, but then, unique thing about Buddhist logic, not available in Pali tradition, not available in Chinese tradition, only in Tibetan tradition. So that's why I think one sort of uh, real usefulness about study, about as the result of st study about the Buddhist logic, your mind will become very sharp. I never was trying to promote myself, right? self promotion, right? uh, it is shame. <laughs> but the fact is, last uh, nearly 30, 30 years, you see, we had serious discussion with uh, great scientists like Richie Divisin, uh, uh, and also the late Verala, uh, and just a number of sort of the well-known scientists in different fields. Uh, when I listen their presentation. I, I think the uh, me too. I think notice, uh, isn't it? They say when they are presentation, they are special sort of expert in their own field. So you see, their presentation is really very wonderful. But then listen very carefully. Some small contradictions here and there, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> then uh, with respect and raise some questions. Oh, your presentation, wonderful. But if this is the case, then uh, uh, that case, little sort of contradiction. Uh, then most, m quite often, you see those uh, scholars, scientists, then they say, oh, I have to think more. <laughs> this is uh, not due to my brain is something special, no. Our way to train, uh, what happened to your hand? Question? You want to question? Oh, okay. Oh, so, so, so that, then I felt way of our training using a lot about logic, Buddhist logic. Buddhist logic, I think, highly developed because of non-Buddhist logic. Through centuries, you see, a lot of challenge each other. So challenge is necessary. If no challenge, then take for granted. When they challenge, you have to think more seriously. So immense help through centuries, through generations, debate or challenge, interaction. So result, both develop. So in any way, uh, so now, because I need to share what you said. Uh, 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 mm, yes, yes. So modern education is highly necessary. But at the same time, you see, I notice some Tibetan, of course, with great sort of help from Indian government, from 60, uh, 1960, you see, we start modern education school. 
uh, and now several thousands educated. Uh, but sometimes you see the people who, uh, who study only uh, modern education, uh, lack of, sort of knowledge about our own sort of uh, uh, this because of the mainly ka, uh, the sort of traditional sort of city education. Uh, sometimes it's uh, some individual, sometimes is facing some problems and using drugs. This clearly shows lack of certain sort of knowledge how to tackle our emotions. So due to lack of that ability, and then relying on drugs. It's quite sad. So, uh, some sort of, because of the crazy sort of people also now coming, because of lack of these basic sort of, or traditional sort of the values. Uh, and then, here, I usually make a distinction. Uh, translations which from India through centuries, altogether uh, 300, uh, around 320 volumes, the content in these 300, over 300 volumes, we can divide three. One portion simply uh, mentioning science, science of matters, science of mind or emotion. That's simply science. So now, uh, last several uh, few decades, you see, meeting with scientists, now many scientists really very much sort of attracted or appreci sort of appreciate the explanation about mind and emotion in Buddhist literature. These scientists, not Buddhist, but they're really showing eagerness to learn uh, from Buddhist literature about mind, emotion, and how to take her. Of course, in Tibetan language, the kasota, what is it? Kasa, ka, or terminal kasota, kasota, namna, yawa, samkam river, ka. Classification about different emotions, different minds. Uh, so all these directly translated from Sanskrit. So very rich. Now in the Western, in the Western language, modern language, uh, English not adequate, uh, German also uh, was not adequate. Ra, Marbe, and French also, I think. So they, uh, in Spanish, of course. Uh, uh, I think you, because uh, uh, the Swiss combine Italian, German, uh, French combine maybe more richer, I don't know. <laughs> so the vocabulary itself, very rich about world of mind, really marvelous. And then with full of knowledge, about the system of emotion and much easier to tackle. Uh, those people who thoroughly educated in modern edu through modern education and some problems come here, then either tranquilizer <laughs> or alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, one occasion. Are you suggesting uh, 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 one occasion in America, one big university, uh, the chancellor, uh, the, I mean, they invited me to talk. So the chancellor company with me, long sort of drive. Then chancellor eventually expressing to me his sort of mental difficulties, problems, yeah. Chancellor, very good sort of educated person. Mm -hmm. And then his salary also very good. <laughs> oh. uh, however, you see, uh, when we so they start to real life, he really much sort of trouble and emotional level. 
So he, deep inside, lonely feeling. Like that. So, so, so that clearly shows modern education alone, not, uh, also not sufficient to tackle our emotional problems. Uh, Buddhist literature, I think, really. So, so, the, so therefore, the, uh, the Tibetan language is really very rich. That's one portion uh, we call science, not religion. So now, the promotion of secular ethics, from that we can make some contribution about mind, about emotion. Then, uh, identify such such emotions are very harmful, such such emotions are very positive, very useful. Then, how to tackle this destructive emotion? Uh, use our own different emotions or different sort of, uh, sort of understanding that way. So, we're already working on it. Uh, so, that's one portion. Another portion, Buddhist philosophy or concept, concept of impermanence, momentarily changing. Oh, I have one story. One Indian uh, a nuclear physicist, uh, once he told me uh, he found the concept of quantum physics. He found some literature wrote by some Nalanda master 2,000 years ago, he found that. So he, as an Indian. Now here, any Indian student? Oh, one, one here. Uh, any? No. So he, as an Indian, uh, he told me he feel very proud. The quantum physics uh, in the modern world is a new idea, a new concept. Uh, in India, that concept already developed 2,000 years ago. So it is very clear when we discuss with physicists or quantum physics, see many similarities. And sometimes the quantum physicist, you see, since objectively nothing can be, can be found, then it's difficult to pinpoint what's the reality. There is some crisis. But Buddhist, particularly Madhimika philosophy, you see, analyze that. So you see, uh, they create some kind of complete form. One side, uh, you cannot find. But one side, there is some reality which can, which can act away. Or function, functions. So these also not necessarily part of Buddhist religion, but simply concept. So uh, these two parts, Buddhist science and Buddhist concept, these, I think, academic subject. I hope now here, your university, already you see some interest, the different religious tradition and also the Tibetan or these things. So I think really uh, worthwhile uh, to, to carry to, to do more, more research work or more study is important. I think quite useful. Thank you. Now next question. I think you, <laughs> where, where that, that person? I, I think if you come here, <laughs> or, or one way from there. So you raise your hand quite, because of quite long period. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned about your hand. Okay. <laughs> your Holiness, my name is David Marx. I'm a medicine student, and I had a question raised by the first question concerning um, meat reduction and you said you believe in the respect of life so promote vegetarianism mm -hmm. 
also you said you believe in science. So as a medicine student, we use science every day for saving humans' life, but under the condition that those medics are tested at animals which are therefore harmed oh. and killed. I would like your opinion on this because it's a personal problem of mm. mine. Oh. One time in America, I think uh, Emory University or where? Yeah, one, one time, I think in, in England, maybe. Where? Yeah. Or one medical institution where you use animal for test, to, for experiment. Uh, uh, big number. And also, there is some organization who fight for right of animal. Oh, they produce some picture or oh, some animal. It's after they tested or experimented, uh, then just because you should go. The waste on. Oh, so the, I saw one dog, some, some cut or something. The face is terrible pain. So one, one occasion, uh, that uh, university, also you see, they, uh, suppose I visit, then some organization protest. I should not go there. And then I, I went and I made clear. Now here, the real point. The firstly, when you carry some sort of experiment, highly necessary in order to gain some sort of knowledge how to deal with human uh, illness. Really, they are highly necessary. There is no other way to, 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 to experiment. Then that may be exception. And secondly, when you carry so experiment, must show love. Uh, this animal respect, and if you see they, so there's possibility to survive, then you should, after f finish the, the, the test, you must take full care their life. I think uh, that's very important. Should not treat it as a sort of vegetable. Should not do that. That's my view. Now here. You know the Kareta, Kanda, Ka. Or say they, in order to uh, get benefit to human life, a little sort of sacrifice on lower being. Theoretically, okay. But still, uh, again, you see, further goes that human being also should be sensible human being. <laughs> Some troublemaker human being's life is not much worthy. <laughs> that, of course, as a doctor, you cannot judge that. Uh, isn't it? Oh. So, uh, uh, so these are uh, quite complicated, right? quite complicated. And also the abortion. Mm -hmm. Basically, killing, act of killing should avoid. But particular case, if you see the, uh, the baby is birth without abortion, there's a lot of complication, a lot of suffering uh, herself or family, then some exceptional case must be there. And then she may die. Because Miss Ayati Mercy killing. Genesia. Oh. Genesia. Oh. You see, what what called mercy killing. Mercy. This also, you see, the, uh, theoretically, exceptional case, okay. But, you see, they, uh, generally, you see, they uh, carry this easily and not good. Clear. So we have to sort of, because of the study, the, uh, very carefully, the case to case. Right, like that. Thank you. Please don't, please. But in any way, I think your, because of the profession, medical, 
wonderful, really. Uh, now you should carry, you see, your professional work, not thinking fame or some sort of research and write some articles and get big name. No, not that way. <laughs> or salary. But respect others' life. And showing uh, when, when you put some injection, injection, the patient, or consider that patient like vegetable. <laughs> should not do that. Uh, consider that patient human brother, human sister. Uh, respect their life and show your serious concern about their well-being. Then they in, because of inject, right? go like that. That I think proper way. That I would like. And then your work is really act of compassion. Wonderful. I think much better than my blah blah. You actually doing these things. Wonderful. Thank you. Last question? Yes, last One question. More. Last question, please. Your role in S, my name is Steven, and I study education. And uh, you've been working with the neurobiologist Francisco Varela. And there seems to be a tendency to incorporate Eastern spiritual ideas into our Western science. And my question to you is, where do you see advantages of this approach? Because for me as a student, I'm familiar with Buddhist teachings, with Taoist teachings, and I want to incorporate those ideas into our academic world. And how do you see that? Where, where are the advantages of this? I already mentioned, you see, the, uh, as far as Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist literature is concerned, one portion is just science, uh, not as a religion. So the T part I, I already mentioned, part of science and part of philosophy and part of religion. So, so far, now last over, last now uh, 30 years, we, I never raised the question of next life or question of Buddhahood or uh, salvation. I never sort of discussed these things. This is religious matter, personal matter, individual matter. We simply discuss about mind, about emotion, and about the brain, and how to tackle these problems, how to keep peace of mind. So, uh, I think, uh, of course, sometimes mindfulness or meditation also is used for health. They're okay. Uh, so you see, take from uh, the religious uh, tradition, uh, as a sort of academic or secular sort of way, that's okay. But if you involve religious belief, then complication there. Not good. Okay. I'm afraid we're slowly okay. coming to the end, but I have, I would like to, for you to sit for one more minute. Mm -mm. Is that okay? Okay, okay. No problem. Just to sit, no problem. <laughs> so, we would like to give you a little present. And as you know, in Switzerland, there are two things that you can get as a present. Either watch or chocolate. So, um, this is the present. It is not a watch. Oh! <laughs> Got it, got it. What? <laughs> chocolate. It's a oh. little bit, <laughs> a little bit of chocolate. Mm. <laughs> it has a history. Part of our university is now in a building that used to be a chocolate factory. Mm. And we made famous Toblerone chocolate. They're triangular chocolate. This is a small <laughs> reminiscence of that time where we produce chocolate and not students. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. You see, you know. Okay. You know, the, some of my friend uh, suggest to me, uh, chocolate is 
uh, not good for health. <laughs> and, and, and doctor, you know. I'm a, uh, I'm a I mean, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> doctor, you see, uh, when I medical checkup, you see, doctor uh, advised me my weight now around uh, 76 kg. So doctor advised me should reduce, blow 75. In the meantime, I asked the my sort of doctor who, who sort of check up, I think last few years. So I asked chocolate, because uh, of uh, uh, okay. Uh, he said, okay. So I enjoy you see, this <laughs> chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our best wishes go with you and your people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.